So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to talk about finding volumes using cylindrical shells. So let's start with an example. We're going to find the volume of the figure obtained by rotating the region bounded by the x-axis and the curve y equals x times x minus 1 squared between 0 and 1 around the y-axis. So let's graph the region we're talking about. So the graph of y equals x times x minus 1 squared looks something like this. We won't talk in detail in this video about why this is, but here's a sketch of this graph. It stops here at 1 as far as, as we're concerned. So we're rotating this thing around the y-axis. Now using the technique we already know, we would end up with a disk. Right? We'd end up with, uh, excuse me, not a disk, a ring. We draw a little rectangle here, and this would get rotated around the y-axis, and we'd form, this would form a ring. And we integrate a bunch of those rings to find the volume. Well, there are two problems with that. One is that when we rotate it around the y-axis, we're going to get an integral in terms of y. We're going to integrate in terms of y, so something, something dy. Well, that means that we're going to have to solve for x in this equation. This is a third-degree polynomial, and so solving for x is going to be difficult, if not impossible. It relates to another problem, namely that when we get a disk, what we uh, when we get a ring, we usually end up subtracting one function value from another. But here, this is all bounded by the same curve, so we'd be subtracting one function from itself. So we avoid all these problems by not using rings, but instead cylindrical shells. So imagine we have a little rectangle here, and it's incredibly narrow. Its width in, uh, for us is going to be dx, and we rotate this thing around the y-axis along with the function. So we draw the corresponding rectangle here, and we end up with what we'll call a cylindrical shell. Right, so it's just the outside part of a cylinder. This thing inside, inside it's hollow. So, and, and remember, this, this rectangle is filled in, so we're actually getting what we can consider a, a, a three-dimensional object. The great thing about this is that we can break this apart and end up with actually what is a rectangular solid. Now, this wouldn't work well, what, when I say this wouldn't work, what do I even mean? I want to say that the volume of this rectangular solid is the same as the volume of this cylindrical shell. Now, in general, that's not going to be true, right? If we break this apart and we sort of deform it into a rectangular solid, we're going to change the volume. But this width is so narrow, it's just dx, that we're really not going to be changing anything. So we're going to set up an integral Instead of, in, instead of using uh, the formula for the volumes of these rings, we're going to use the formula for the volumes of these cylindrical shells. And to find the volume of the shell, we can look at this rectangular solid. So the height of this rectangular solid is the height of the cylindrical shell, and the height is determined by the value of the function. So this, in this case, is just going to be x times x minus 1 squared. What about the width of the rectangular solid? Well, this width comes from the circumference of the cylindrical shell, right? We're breaking, say we're breaking it right here and then flattening it out. So the, the circumference of the cylindrical shell is the width of the rectangular solid. And the circumference, we can get that in terms of the radius, and the radius is the x value here. So it's going to be uh, 2 pi times x, right? 2 pi times the radius. And the last dimension is the depth of this rectangular solid, and this is the width of this rectangle, and this rectangle has width dx. So we find the volume of the region rotated around the y-axis by integrating the formula for the volumes of these cylindrical shells. So the integral is the integral from 0 to 1, because now we're integrating in terms of x, right? We've got a nice dx here. 2 pi 
x times x times x minus 1 squared dx, right? The formula inside is the formula for the volume of this rectangular solid. So, last thing to do is evaluate this integral, which we'll do on the next page. So the volume, let's write down the integral again, is the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi, and we had x times x, so I'll just make that an x squared, times x minus 1 squared dx. So the first thing, let's distribute this polynomial, and in fact, pull out the 2 pi. So we'll get 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared dx. This is the polynomial you get when you distribute this polynomial inside here. So let's find an antiderivative for each of these terms. You get 2 pi, antiderivative of x to the fourth is x to the fifth over 5, minus 2 times an antiderivative of x cubed, so this is 2 times x to the fourth over 4, plus antiderivative of x squared, which is x cubed over 3. And we're evaluating this between 0 and 1. Well, we know that when we plug in 0, each of these terms is going to become 0, so we can ignore that part. Let's just plug in 1, and we get 2 pi times 1 fifth minus 2 over 4, which is 1 half, plus 1 third. So we could leave the answer like this, but let's actually simplify it a little bit more. So 2 pi, and let's get all these things over a common denominator. The common denominator in this case is going to be 30. So this is 6 over 30 minus 15 over 30 plus 10 over 30. 6 minus 15 plus 10 is positive 1. So this is 2 pi times 1 over 30 or pi over 15. So this is the volume of the region obtained by rotating, or the figure obtained by rotating that region around the y-axis, and we found it using cylindrical shells.